Hey all, Travis Baldry here. I'm putting together this video to go through my audiobook recording and editing process, which is, as far as I know, a little unique. Um, I talked about this a little bit in a, uh, a Facebook uh, group post, and this video is designed to kind of go along with that. But the upshot is that uh, when I am ultimately responsible for the editing and mastering of audio that I record, this is the way I do it. And it saves me a huge amount of time because I have at this point managed to collapse the process of reviewing and editing the audio into the record itself. It's hard to overstate how many hours this has saved me. But I'm a little hesitant to talk about it because it is very specific. There are some very clear requirements. And if you do not meet those requirements, this is not going to work for you. There are big caveats. Um, so I want to be very, very clear about that. I do not want to lead you astray and give you the idea that you can just do this because if you don't meet these requirements, it isn't going to work. So I'm going to go through those requirements now. The first and biggest is that the only DAW that I am aware of that is currently capable of doing this in this way is Adobe Audition Creative Cloud 2017 and up. Old versions of Audition aren't going to work. The second requirement is that you need my punch and roll plugin for Adobe Audition, which is available for free on the Adobe Exchange and on my website. You should be punching and rolling anyway. This should be a no-brainer, but it is part of the process, and you've got to be able to do that if you want this to function. The next requirement is that you have to record in headphones. If you do not, you will not be cognizant of the sounds that your body is making, the world around you is making, and if you're not aware of those sounds, you can't edit them out. So, you got to record in cans. Non-negotiable. The next thing is that you need to be a reasonably proficient audio engineer. You ought to know what a spectral view is. You ought to be able to do editing in it. You know, you, you, if you do not have that level of expertise, you should pay someone else to engineer and master your audio. And then the last thing is that you need to pay for someone to proof your audio. Somebody else's ears need to be on it. You're never going to be able to proof it effectively yourself anyway. You should outsource your proofing, but... It's especially important if you're not reviewing the audio after you have recorded it. So, those are the requirements. And uh, if you're not prepared to meet those requirements, this is totally not going to work for you. Um, all that said, I'm going to show you how it functions, and uh, then you can all tell me I'm wrong. All right, I'm going to go picture in picture in here, and we're going to take a look at Adobe Audition. Actually, let me maximize this. All right. So I'm currently in the multi-track view in Adobe Audition, which is where you do non-destructive punch and roll recording. Here is the punch and roll extension. I've got it docked right here. And uh, you can see I've got two things open. I've got the actual multi-track project. It's armed and ready to record. And I have some room tone. You need some raw, unmastered room tone for this to function. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this into my clipboard. We're going to use this to basically mix paste out errors in our audio as we are recording. All right, that's done. It's in my clipboard. Now what I'm going to do is just read a little bit of copy. If my stomach doesn't cooperate and make gurgly noises and no children thunder by upstairs, then I'm just going to thump my foot on the floor. But ideally, you know, I'll screw up in some really enjoyable way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch all the way to the dog here. Let it get my face out of the way. And let's go ahead and do it. Chapter 1. I locked the door to the shop and turned around to meet trouble. I jumped at the sight of her. A minute ago, the porch outside had been empty. She was a blonde with a slight build, a little on the short side. And I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now, my stomach didn't cooperate and my children didn't run by upstairs, so I went ahead and just thumped my foot so we would have an obvious edit to do. So, in Adobe Audition, if I double-click on a clip, I go immediately to the waveform editing view. Here we are. I've got this spectral view up at all times. It's this little button right here. I always edit with a spectral view up. It's really required for this to function properly. So, and I can't stress this enough, you need a certain amount of experience having done editing with a spectral view active for this to be useful for you. You have to know what the sounds that your body and the world around you look like in the spectral view in order to identify them quickly. I know what a footstep looks like. I know what my nose farts look like and weird tummy gurgles. I can identify them quickly in this view just by looking without having to listen to the whole thing. If you can't do that, this doesn't, this isn't really, you know, it's not a time win for you. So I know this is a footstep. 
It's got this sharp attack, it's got this weird jaggly little waveform, and this fall off. And it falls between two obvious major chunks of waveform that are me saying things. I know this is a footstep. So what I do to remove sounds like this that are in between these waveforms is I use a mix paste. Now that room tone that we copied earlier is now in my clipboard. If I use mix paste, and I would normally use this with a hotkey, but just to illustrate it, mix paste will paste my clipboard audio into only the area that I have selected, and it will softly cross-blend at the edges of that paste. You can see I'm overriding the audio with 100% input from both the existing audio and my copied audio, and with a cross-fade set. And it been empty. She was a block. The thump is gone. I'm going to undo that real quick. The other cool thing about Audition is that you can repeat the previous action that you executed with F3, and it will not bring up any dialog boxes. So, I hit F3, my mix paste is complete. I can do this anywhere. Here, let's undo it. Now, the other kinds of edits that I do are with the heel brush. That's this little jobby right here. You hold the B key to do this. And, uh, so I would normally not edit this out. This is a little mouth crackle. Um, RX mouth declick would take care of this easily, but I'm gonna edit it out. So for things that are kind of like high in the spectrum here and maybe inside of a syllable, um, things like nose farts, for instance, or other little mouthy crackles that I don't that are that are too much and would otherwise require a repunch, I will use the heel brush to get those. Now I should stress that this is not for every edit. You just because you recorded audio doesn't mean it's worth editing. If you have pacing issues, you don't want to be trying to figure that out in here. If you misset a word, you just repunch. I mean, you, that's why you have punch and roll. This is for editing out things that you know happened that are not going to impact the audio if you just clean them up right now. All right, so the other cool thing about Adobe Audition is that it synchronizes your playhead between the waveform view and the spectral view. So I'm going to set my playhead right here in the middle of this waveform. When I switch back to multitrack, you'll see that it has been synchronized. That's really kind of important. Let's head back in here. I'm going to put this where I want to punch in, and I can do that very accurately here in the spectral view. When I switch back to multitrack, that's ready to go. So I can now punch in, read the next sentence, and carry on. Obviously, this has been really slow because I'm explaining all this to you and bringing up windows and yada, yada, yada. This is fast if this is something that you do as a matter of course and you're good at it. Build. A little on the short side. I pegged her age between 22 and 25. Old enough to know better than to sneak up behind a guy like that. And we're done. Let's just assume this is our chapter complete. We've got our nice, clean transition. We've already repaired our issues. I'm going to save this project, and I'm going to go ahead and bounce it down. All right. Let's call this two. I can bring this up in the waveform view, and now, as part of my process, I would master it, so I'm going to use my mastering stack on it. Audio is mastered. No weird noises. Everything's nice and clean. I have no breaks from my punch. I'll check my amplitude statistics. Look at that, negative 18.96, ready to go. Now, I would, of course, paste appropriate uh, front and end uh, room tome slices that are the, the proper lengths, and then I would send this off to be proofed. I'm finished. I'm not going to listen to this again. My proofer is. That's it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to me jabbering at you. All right, so that's the whole process. And again, caveats abound. This totally may not be for you. And I realize this kind of uh, editing process does take place in other arenas, but I think this is currently potentially the only avenue to do this as part of punch and roll recording for audiobooks. I know other people do on the fly edits as they go, but I don't think you can pair that with punch and roll any other way at present. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, this is the way I do it. Again, I really don't want to pressure anybody to do this or put it forth as something that everyone should be aspiring to. It's just something that works for me and saves me a really, really enormous amount of time. So I feel a little churlish not sharing it. Anyway, hope this has been helpful and informative. Take care.